Okay, hi, I'm Skiff. Thank you for your time in participating in the lecture for this week. We're discussing schizophrenia. So, uh, first we will have a brief introduction of the schizophrenia. It is a mental disorder characterized by continuous and relapsing episodes of psychosis. And major symptoms include hallucinations, typically hearing voices, delusions, paranoia, and disorganized thinking. Other symptoms include social withdrawal, decreased emotional expression, and apathy. Onset typically occurs between the late teens and early 30s. And symptoms typically come on gradually, begin in young adulthood, and in many cases never resolve. And there is no objective diagnostic test. The diagnosis is used to describe observed behavior that may stem from numerous different causes. Besides observed behavior, doctors will also take a history that includes the person's reported experiences and the reports of other fam familiar with the person when making diagnosis. To diagnose someone with schizophrenia, doctors are supposed to confirm that symptoms and functional impairment are present for six months according to DSM-5 or one month according to ICD-11. Many people with schizophrenia have other mental disorders, especially substance use disorders, depressive disorders, anxiety disorder, and obsessive compulsive disorder. And in 2017, a global burden disease study estimated there was 1.1 million new cases. And in 2019, the WHO reported a total of 20 million cases globally. Schizophrenia affects about around 0.7% of people at some point in their life. It occurs 1.4 times more frequent in males than females and typically appears earlier in men. The peak ages of onset are 25 years old for males and 27 years old for females. And positive symptoms are those symptoms that are not normally experienced, but are present in people during a psychotic episode in schizophrenia. They include delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized thoughts and speech, typically regarded as manifestations of psychosis. And hallucinations most commonly involve the sense of hearing as hearing voices, but can sometimes involve any of the other senses of taste, sight, smell, and touch. They are also typically related to the content of the delusion thing. Delusions are bizarre or bizarre in nature and distortions of self-experience, such as feeling as if one's thoughts or feelings are not really one's own or believing that thoughts are being inserted into their mind, sometimes termed passively phenomenon. And positive symptoms generally respond well to medication and become reduced over the course of the illness, perhaps related to the age-related decline in dopamine activity. Negative symptoms are deficits of normal emotional responses or other thought processes. And the five recognized domains of negative symptoms are showing flat expressions or little emotion, a poverty of speech, an inability to feel pleasure, the lack of desire to form relationships, a lack of motivations, and apathy. Some of the negative symptoms are seen as motivational deficits resulting from impaired reward processing. And reward is the main driver of motivation, and this is mostly meditated by dopamine. Cognitive impairment is also a core symptom of schizophrenia and appears as early as prodromal phase does not improve after the symptoms are relieved and remain stable during the course of disease. Compared with positive symptoms and negative symptoms, cognitive impairment is a more serious brain dysfunction. Schizophrenia is described as a neurodevelopmental disorder with no precise boundary or single cause and is sought to develop from gene environment interactions with involved vulnerability factors. 
The interactions of these risk factors are complex as numerous and diverse insults from conception to adulthood can be involved. A genetic predisposition on its own without interaction environmental factors would not give rise to the development of schizophrenia. The genetic component means that generally brain development is disturbed and environmental influence affects the postnatal development of the brain. Evidence suggests that genetically susceptible children are more likely to be vulnerable to the effects of environmental risk factors. And patients at an early age of onset exhibit more negative symptoms and cognitive deficits, as well as lower serum BDNF levels. And negative symptoms and cognitive function were negatively and positively correlated with age of onset, respectively. And poor cognitive function was associated with higher levels of negative symptoms and lower serum BDNF levels. Meditating effect analysis showed that negative symptoms partially meditated the relationship between age at onset and cognitive deficit. And serum BDNF could modulate this, this relationship. The meditating effect of negative symptoms showed a dose-dependent trend of mortality. And plasma total SOD and MNSOD activities in patients with first episode schizophrenia were significantly higher than those in the normal control group. And those in males were higher than those in females. PANSS depression factor in patients was significantly positive correlated with MNSOD and total SOD activity. It was especially significant in males. And compared with the control group, the serum total SOD and SOD activities in the first episode on medicated schizophrenia patients were increased, and the BDNF and MDNDA levels were in decrease. And interaction between BDNF levels and MNSOD activity is associated with attentional function in patients with schizophrenia. And compared with healthy controls, the P50 ratio of patients with chronic schizophrenia was significantly increased, and the S1 amplitude was significantly decreased, and the S2 amplitude was significantly increased. And in the patient group only, the S1 amplitude was significantly associated with both language and attention. And the S2 amplitude was significantly associated with both viral, spatial, and structural and language. The interaction of abnormal glucose metabolism and WM structural disturbance may affect cognitive dysfunction in first episode drug naive schizophrenia patients. And the primary treatment of schizophrenia is the use of antipsychotic medications, often in combination with psycho psychosocial interventions and social support. And the first line treatment for schizophrenia is antipsychotic. The first generation antipsychotics, now called typical antipsychotics, are dopamine antagonists that block D2 receptors and affect the neurotransmission of dopamine. Those brought out later the second generation psychotics, known as atypical antipsychotics, can also have the effect on another neurotransmitter, serotonin. Antipsychotics can reduce the symptoms of anxiety within hours of their use, but for other symptoms it may take several days or weeks to reach their full effect. And about 50 to 70% of patients fulfilling the criteria for schizophrenia experiences auditory verbal hallucinations on frequent biases. Antipsychotic medication is often chosen as a first treatment for this disabling symptom of schizophrenia. However, in 20% of the patients, hallucinations appear to be refractory to, a, to adequate treatment trials within psycho medication 
And the side effects for that is typical antipsychotics are associated with a higher rate of movement disorder, including inability to sit, and some atypicals are associated with considerable weight gain, diabetes, and risk of metabolic symptom. And a number of psycho interventions, psychosocial interventions that include several types of psychotherapy may be useful in the treatment of schizophrenia, such as family therapy, group therapy, cognitive remediation therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and metacognitive training, skills training, and help with substance use and weight management often needed as a side effect of an antipsychotic. Early evaluation is a key point, especially in untreated patients, to document the specific manifestations of the patient's psychopathology before symptoms are treated with medication. This has important implications for later treatment decisions, including the assessment of treatment response. Patients with schizophrenia have different symptoms, so a multifaceted assessment of psychotic symptoms, including hallucinations, fantasies, is required. And in the early stage of the disease, when the symptoms are not prominent and the medical history is uncertain, the evaluation focuses on the role of diagnosis and, assist, and assistance to the current treatment. These are some of the fre frequently used clinical assessments for schizophrenia. And we, we all know that TMS, especially the RTMS, is a non-invasive and novel protocol for schizophrenia. And RTMS treatment includes functional changes such as cerebral blood flow, and RTMS treatment induces neurotransmitter release in the st stimulated area. And the decrease of the mechanism of TMS in treatment schizophrenia, including many aspects, and they have found decrease of dopamine activity in the ventral striatum, a decrease of prefrontal dopamine transmission and a decrease of prefrontal function. And high frequency RTMS can increase cortical excitability. Therefore, the brain activity can be increased by high frequency RTMS to achieve the purpose of treating negative symptoms. And fMRI showed that auditory hallucinations were accompanied by activation of the reticular system in both cortical and subcortical brain areas, including Broca's and the bilateral prefrontal. Frontal. An earlier report on the treatment of positive symptoms was the stimulation of the left temporal parietal lobe with one hertz, and it comes with good results. Therefore, auditory hallucination symptoms can be treated by low-frequency RTMS stimulation of the left of the left temporal parietal lobe. This is the evidence-based guidelines and it has recommended to use low frequency RTMS of the left TBC in auditory hallucination in schizophrenia and also use a high frequency RTMS of the left DLPFC on negative symptoms of schizophrenia. And uh, for auditory verbal hallucinations, highly controversial results were reported concerning the effect of low frequency RTMS applied to the left TPG on auditory hallucinations, which, as many positive studies showing RTMS efficacy, as many negative studies showing RTMS inefficacy. However, considering the effect size calculated in various meta-analysis literature data appear to be in favor of a positive and a possible effect of 
low frequency RTMS of the left TPC on auditory hallucinations, which has a level of C recommendation. For negative symptoms, overall, the final balance to uh, consists of one negative multicenter class one study based on a large sample versus four positive smaller class two studies. And it seems reasonable to reduce the level of evidence from level B to level C and in favor of a possible possible effect of high frequency RTMS of the left DLPFC on the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. And RTMS can be used as an add-on treatment for patients with schizophrenia who have failed multiple drug interventions. High frequency RTMS, especially for 10 Hz to 20 Hz stimulation, may play a role in inducing negative symptoms. And the treatment of RTMS in schizophrenia is still in its infancy, and more research is needed to explore the duration of improvement and optimal stimulation parameters in some areas of cognitive impairment. And more accurate stimulation locations need to be explored. And accumulating studies have shown that high frequency RTMS may improve cognitive dysfunction of the patients with schizophrenia, but with inconsistent results. And this study has assessed the efficacy of different frequencies of neural navigated RTMS in ameliorating cognitive impairments and alleviating the psychotic symptoms. A total of 120 patients were randomly assessed to 20 Hz RTMS, 10 Hz RTMS, or the sham stimulation for eight weeks. And they have a follow-up at week 32. They have used the assessment of neuropsychological status and their psychotic symptoms were assessed with the positive and negative syndrome scales. And the results demonstrated that 20 Hz RTMS treatment produced an effective therapeutic benefit on immediate, on immediate memory of patients with chronic schizophrenia at week 8, but not in the 10 Hz group. Interestingly, both 10 Hz and 20 Hz RTMS treatments produced delayed effects on cognitive functions at the six months follow-up. And in both 10 Hz RTMS and, and 20 Hz RTMS, the improvements in RBNS total score were positively correlated with the reduction of PNSS positive subscore at the six months follow-up. And the, the results suggest that add-on high-frequency RTMS could be an effective treatment for cognitive impairments in patients with chronic schizophrenia with a delayed effect. And for schizophrenia, the treatment effects of, RT, of RTMS are more definitive. TMS is superior to sham with all patients remaining on their standard treatments. This rapid review identified that serious adverse events were uncommon, with only minor discomfort reported, such as headaches and facial muscle twitching. So this is the protocols from the therapeutic guidelines, which is used only for reference, and the detailed protocols need to be reviewed by their doctors. And these are some protocols from some famous uh, specialists in China. And thank you for your patience. If you have any questions, please feel free to discuss with us.